Psalms, chapter 117. I don't know if we'll be able to get this done. We may have to look at this one a little while. It's the shortest chapter in the Bible. I got a question. I wonder how many times it's been read. What's the shortest chapter have to say? From our study, we began in Genesis chapter 1 of the Psalms 117. Because we're coming up to the longest chapter. Psalms 119. What's the shortest? Oh, praise the Lord. What's short, simple, and sweet in life? Praising the Lord. Remember, Psalms is your is your your hymnal of the Bible. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. So this is not to Jews. This is to Jews and Gentiles. Do you know what one of your charges is going to be if you if you're at the Great White Throne Judgment and you're lost? Any dispensation, any A, H, B, C, or A, D. You know what one of your charges is going to be? You know what the charge is going to be against outside the eight people that got in the ark of Noah's day? You know what the charge is going to be against the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Europeans, the Asians? The Native Americans, the Africans, the Hamites, the Shemites, the Japheth, the Australians, whatever you want to call them. Men and women. God records how many times you praised him. Now remember when we talked about back in Psalms 115, who gets the glory? God self or idols who do you praise it doesn't matter if you're saved doesn't matter if you're the elite Jews the apple of God's eyes nations are to praise the Lord and not only that praise him all you people Well, I live on a remote island somewhere. We're not a nation. Okay? You're not a nation? Praise him, all ye people. Just in case you're not a people. I mean, just in case you're not a nation, all the people. The entire population from Adam to the last man is to praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to go over. You don't have to go, but I'm going to go over to Revelation chapter 4. we got time. This long verse here. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now the question is, why was I why am I on this earth? I got the answer. Revelation 4. You were created on this earth to give God the glory and credit. Now imagine if you gave it to a sports team. Imagine you gave it to a child. Imagine you gave it to a superstar or somebody that has a poster or a sports figure. Imagine giving it to a pastor. Imagine they give it to yourself. Imagine giving a bunch of dead presidents, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Hamilton. When you're supposed to be giving it to God. You know, it's funny what God does to you throughout the day. 
my wife and I were watching some funny videos today, cute videos and that. And there are people out there who will teach their dog to say grace before they eat. And that, that was, a couple of them were cute. A couple of them were, that was cute. That was interesting. How many parents teach their children to praise the Lord before they eat? And yet, in America, there's only one day of Thanksgiving. And that's given to pigging out and football. We don't even celebrate holidays right in America no more. Memorial Day. Everybody gets half naked, goes on the beach, and has hamburgers and booze. What's that have to do with any servicemen? For his, God's merciful kindness is great towards us. Now, what is mercy? Any church, since it says nations of people, go to any church as they're coming out or going into church. Say, listen, I just want to ask you one question. Before you go in or as you come out. Do you want mercy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now give me the definition of mercy. How many would know? I mean, there used to be daughters named at one time grace and mercy and prudence. Do you even know what those words mean? Mercy is to treat an offender better than he deserves. Now, if that's not a definition of the American correctional system, I don't know what is. When somebody brutally rapes and kills a woman and ends up at the hotel correction, And he's got bellhops to welcome men. He's got his own private security force. He gets meals. He gets health. He gets dental. He gets clothing. He gets a bed. He gets AC. He get. I just can keep going, 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 going. And they don't deserve that. Where the Bible says there are certain crimes that you need to be put to death. The Bible is strong. A Christian is to be strong on capital punishment. Now, yes, you give that guy a Bible witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gets saved. Amen. Glory to God. But that don't stop nothing. Now, God's mercy is. He'll give you New Jerusalem. He'll give you a mansion. He'll give you eternal life with no pain or sorrow where you deserve the pains and torments and agony of hell. And you had nothing to do to get God's mercy. All you had to do was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as your Savior. For his merciful kindness is great towards us. Read the book of Exodus. What Israelite was so great that they that Egypt deserved what they got to bring them out? What was it? But God loved the Jew. God loved Abraham. God loved Isaac and Jacob. He made a covenant with Abraham. An everlasting covenant. That he's been merciful to those Jews. That there are Jews today that can be saved. And won't die and go to hell. God, if he wanted to, could have wiped out every single Jew during Adolf Hitler. And yet he was merciful. God, if he wanted to, could wipe out every Jew under the Antichrist. Yet, but that covenant he made with Abraham, the merciful long-suffering of God, he won't. There will be a arraignment when we come back with the Lord Jesus Christ to pick up on the way.
God is great in his mercy that when we take our last breath, Paul says to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. Why? According to evolution, we are here, but where does our food come from? Explain to us the ability that we have to eat, yet the food showed up. Where God is merciful, where he made us from clay, he knew what our form and our design was, so he provided everything that we needed. Imagine God making man in Genesis 2 and forgot the oxygen. Oops. Oh, bury that one. Let's start again. All right, let there be oxygen. Try it again. All right, there's man. There he is. Go. What did he die for? Michael, what did he die for? What's hungry? Oh, he needs to eat? All right. Sure. Bury that one. Let there be fruit. All right. Let him go. What do you mean, Gabriel? What happened to him? What did he die of this time? Water? And, and you, you think that's comical, but how did evolution provide everything we needed? You know, if evolution was true, where's sex? How does man reproduce himself? The Bible says man came from ape. What about woman? Where does she come from? How did you get two species of every kind of, of human and animal to reproduce their own self? It's the mercifulness of God. God looked at Adam one day and said, okay, i got to find him to help me. I want more atoms on this planet. And Revelation 4 says, I'm going to make more of them for you to worship and give me the glory. Psalms 117. How do you know? Genesis 3, you read that God came in the garden. He came to have fellowship with Adam that day. How do you know that? In Genesis 4, one of the boys gave a proper sacrifice. Who told Cain to bring that? I guarantee God did. I guarantee God came down in one of those moments and spoke to him and said, Listen, you guys need to sacrifice now, and this is exactly what I want. You know what God did for the nation of Israel is mercy? He gave them the law. He said, This is what I want. Don't you do it. Don't you do anything else but. Oh, I know you can't. I know you can't do the law. The law shows you are guilty. So when my son comes, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever, how do you know that's a true statement? Because Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and Christ." Endureth forever. Liveth forever. Jesus said, though heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And John 1.1 1, 1 says, the word is Christ, Jesus. So there's Jesus Christ in the shortest chapter of the Bible. And he endures forever and ever. He will outlast the nations and the people that don't praise him. How do you like that one? And to conclude this long chapter, praise ye the Lord. Now look at where it started. It said praise the Lord. Look where it ends up. Praise ye the Lord. All right. Praise ye the Lord, all ye nations. Germany, Switzerland, America, Native American was a nation, China. All the groups of people that are under one body. That's a nation. All right? 
Just in case, praise ye all ye people, those people who are not under a nation. The Waldisians were not under a nation. They were under God. When, when the pilgrims came to America, they were no longer under a nation. They were under God. There have probably been groups of people all over this planet at one point in time, and maybe even today. They're not a nation. Maybe they were excluded from a nation. Maybe they're excluded from their tribe. Or, or they just set out to be different because something was wrong. The Jews in the book of Exodus were not a nation. They didn't become a nation to Exodus 20 when God gave them the law to be a nation. There are people in America today that are not a part of this nation. We're supposed to be a nation under God. I know I laugh at that. But any atheists are not under this nation. They are our people. How do you know that? What's the Constitution say? We the people. So, praise ye the Lord, the nations. Praise ye the Lord, uh, the Lord, ye people. Now look at the last thing. Praise ye the Lord. I'm not part of the nation. I'm, listen, I'm not part of America. My home is New Jerusalem. I'm a born-again Christian. I'm not as the people. I'm not under Satan. I'm a saved, born-again Christian. I am ambassador of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, praise ye the Lord. I'm outside the nation. I'm outside the people. So what do I do? I praise the Lord. Psalms 117 tells you, in a nutshell, everybody, excluding no one, is to praise the Lord. How many of you think fail at that? Even the Native American, it is recorded that when he would take down a deer, when he came to that dead deer, he would bow down the knee and give the great white father credit. Was that great white father in that time before the knowledge of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Was that God, the father, the God of the heavens, the God of the Bible? Or was it an idol? I'll tell you where the idol was. The totem pole. The little wooden heads. The little apple heads. You know the little apple heads they used to teach kids how to make? You take an apple, you carve into it, you put a face and all that, and, and little chives, and then you, you you bake it. And it comes a little shrunken head. Isn't that cute? Man, that was a god of the Native Americans. But if that American, um, American, if that Native American bowed down the knee to the God that who he believed is the God of all and thanked that God for taking that deer down, he is as equal as, as a born-again family sitting at a, at a dinner table that bowed their head and asked God to bless their meal. What was what is the difference between Nineveh and somebody if you were a witness to him on the street would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Nineveh acknowledged God. So is that person that is going to get saved. Nineveh repented. So should somebody who's going to get saved repented. Nineveh got right. So should that person that got saved. Nineveh gave God the credit and feared God. So is that person get saved. Yeah, but Nineveh didn't have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I believe? I believe you're going to see the king. And I believe you're going to see those people in Nineveh in glory. I'm not going to say New Jerusalem. Those were Gentiles. 
Naaman feared God and run about way did what God told him to do. I believe Naaman's going to be in glory. That's where, you, and that's not to get in the long. That's a whole different story. But you got New Jerusalem for the Christian, the New Earth that goes to Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob's descendants, and you got the New Heavens. All right. So you got a city by God. Praise ye the Lord, I would say. Let all the people praise him. That would be maybe Abraham and the Jews and the new earth. And all the nations. That would be the new heavens. There they are right there. And what are you going to be doing in glory in eternity? Didn't we talk about that last night in Psalms 116, the other night? Thanksgiving. There's coming a day like Adam and Eve before Genesis 3. There is coming a day that 100% of the population will give God the praise and glory. It's coming that day. We're going to have such a mind that we won't have to memorize scripture. It's going to be here. We're going to have such that mind. We're not going to need a songbook. It's going to be here. And Jesus Christ is going to be there. And he is worthy. And why is the church closer? Because he's got the wounds. No Jew or Gentile outside this dispensation is going to understand those wounds. No angel understands it. But when Israel is praising the Lord in the new earth, what is there is not the wounds of Jesus Christ. It's that God made a covenant with Abraham. To them, it's not the Christ that died for their sins. It is the God that is merciful and kindness and greatness to them, that he is faithful to his word. Christ was faithful to death and the resurrection. We are made... And we will be held accountable to God for the praise that we ought to give him or the praise that we do give him. That is why man is here. God made the cherubim. What do they do all day long? Praise him. The 24 elders, whoever they are. They fall down and worship him. That's what it's all about. Giving God the glory. Not the man. To God. Oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to 
take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee.